Lights, camera, action. When a script is written that is so bad, no one will film it. These brave podcasters will bring it to life just so they can mock it. This is Table Reads. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Table Reads with Sean McBee, Jeff Lewis, and Joshua Baker. <laughs> I was official. watching Jeff's face. He lit up when he heard his name. It's official. We were, we were practicing Indiana Jones voices, and I just turned around. That's me. <laughs> Broke completely out of character. Good name, Jeff. No time for love, Dr. Jones. So Jeff's finally official. Oh, man. He's in the opening. Welcome to Table Reads, everybody. You've just met Jeff. That's Josh over there. I'm Sean. My name is Josh. Over there. And in case you're wondering why they were practicing Indiana Jones, you should probably look at what you're playing on your podcast app before you hit play, because we are doing Indiana Jones 3 that never happened. The Monkey King. By Christopher. (laughs) By Chris Columbus. (laughs) By Christopher Columbus. By Christopher Columbus. (laughs) Not only did he discover America. I'm DB Trivia. He sa- he shot this movie on three ships. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this third installment to be of the indie franchise was based on George Lucas's idea to have the Fountain of Youth feature in an Indiana Jones film. Ooh. He wrote an eight page outline in 1984 and then Spielberg hired Chris Columbus, not the explorer slash genocidal fuckhead. Uh, but, the guy, but the guy who he had recently worked with on Goonies to flesh that out into a script. There were apparently two drafts done. We're reading the first draft, but given another draft beyond this one to fix any issues, the tale is that Lucas and Spielberg both found the supernatural elements too far-fetched still. Good news for Jeff, though. They also worried that it might come across as a bit too racist. That's great news for me, for reasons that Sean will explain now. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Jeff likes to do the, the shitty racist stuff. That's It's a very niche market. You gotta understand. <laughs> do, do you remember uh, Hector? <laughs> Listen, okay, hold on. No, hold on a minute. What, what about the, uh, the, the, Asian the Asian lady in the basement? No, oh, I love your Asian lady. Give us an Asian lady. I, I, I don't, no, I'm sure it'll come. I'll, I'll, I'm going to bring her out in this script. You won't know when it's coming. <laughs> oh, Marianne, whatever her name is in this <laughs> Oh, we've we've got a pretty special love interest from what I've read, but we'll find that out as we get into it. And speaking of, let's fucking get into it. Fade in. Indie 3, a screenplay by Chris Columbus. First draft dated May 3rd, 1985. Underwater. Close up, a brightly colored fly attached to a dangling fishing line. A large salmon swims to the fly. The salmon examines the fly, deciding whether or not to bite. Camera pans upward. Cameras don't pan upward, just so you know, and you're not supposed to put camera directions in the script anyway. They just pan. You would think, well, it's a it's a tilt or a jib if it's going up. Pan, pan, pan. Also, you would think the guy that had just written Young Sherlock Holmes, Goonies, and Gremlins would know better. Maybe he just decided he could do whatever he wanted after that run. <laughs> yeah, I could do whatever. Good point. I'm redefining pan. <laughs> One day I'm going to write Bicentennial Man, but until then I can do what I want. Oh. <laughs> Not only was the movie sad, but he died. Camera pans upward, tracking the line and moving out of the water. As we pass the crooked boards of a small rowboat and continue to pan upward, a man reclines in the boat, napping. His hands gently grip a wooden fishing pole. He is handsomely dressed in a sportsman's trousers and blazer. His green tweed fishing hat is lowered over his face. Its brim is filled with various types of tackle and bait. It is dusk, a warm summer evening. And suddenly this music is just way, way too much. Fishing, 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 fishing. Oh. 
See, that's better, right? (laughs) The boat rests on a calm lake, surrounded by moors. Thick night fog has begun to settle over the entire area. Title, Scotland, 1937. We don't have moors here. No one's ever like, hey, you want to go down to the moors? What is a moor exactly? I don't know. Is that like a bog? We may have been invited to one. That's, that's true. <laughs> if so, we have a different name for them here. What if it's 7 Eleven? We is don't that, have moors. We don't have fjords. That's the thing you this eat. This country when you, has gone to hell. This is the thing when you eat when you go camping, right? When a man can't fish in a blazer and trousers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, the man's fishing line becomes taut. The wooden pole buckles. The man stirs. He sits up, moving the hat from his face. Camera dollies forward into a close up of the man. They're going to dolly across the water. How do you lay those dolly tracks? Evil Dead style. (laughs) It is Indiana Jones. Oh, I didn't see that coming. His face anxious, hopeful. Indy begins to reel in his catch. A voice interrupts in the distance. Who wants to be McGowan? What do I got to do? Scottish. We got McGowan. 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 Uh, McGowan. McGowan. <laughs> okay, I'm going to step back. <laughs> it's, it's in the distance, right? Dr. Jones! I don't think I got that What was all. that? I don't know. Dr. Just Jones! <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. <laughs> Scrooge McDuck. Okay. Dr. Jones! Dr. I got to be back here. Dr. Jones! Dr. Jones! Oh, and he lot, turns love it. in the direction <laughs> of the sound. Yeah, a lot of rolls going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Indy turns to the direction of the sound Still struggling with the line Indiana's POV Countless orange flames sparkle across the moors The torches are being carried by several members of a small village The villagers are gathered behind a group of six policemen The policemen are headed by Inspector Angus McGowan A plump, balding fellow With a veiny, bulbous nose Beady green eyes and a thick, curled red mustache. McGowan shouts to Indy, We need your assistance! Come on, Mac, it's the first bite I've had all week. Please, it's very important. Oh, shit. (laughs) I don't know where you're from, Jeff. (laughs) You're from, like, three places. Yeah, I went Indian with that. (laughs) It's very important. (laughs) What's the L for? Just keep I trying. Don't know. Just keep trying. Important all. Very important. It's very important. <laughs> very important. Indiana struggles. A, that L is clearly a typo, but it somehow work like helps with the accent. It helped me. Now everything ends with an L. <laughs> <laughs> Indiana. <laughs> Indiana struggles a bit longer with the line, but his conscience prevails, and Indy drops the fishing pole. With a grumble, he rows back to shore. The moors, several minutes later. Night has fallen. It is very dark. In several minutes, a reluctant Indiana has joined the inspector and the other policemen. They lead the townspeople along the foggy moors. Slowly, carefully, the villagers search, creeping, their faces tense, many unable to hide their fear. A summer wind sends an eerie howl whistling through the night air. Blue moonlight bathes the moors, creating stark, frightening shadows. An expression of anger and annoyance cover Indiana's face. He grumbles to McGowan. Do you value our friendship, Mac? More than me nightly pint. Then this better not be some wild goose chase. Taint wild. Jeez, we're after Dr. Jones. Geese. Geese. What? The word is geese. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> the- Jeezel. It looks like Jeezel. What is that? He spelled Jeez. <laughs> Somebody uh, spelled Jeez for me, Rook. <laughs> it's with Tate, while geese were after, Dr. Jones. You got me word of that. Sincere. And the McGowan's word is truer than an angel's kiss. That's actually not bad. I'm getting You're there. Getting I'm getting there. there. You're, You're getting there. The Jeez helps me. <laughs> y'all are just, just shaming me. <laughs> there is a sudden scream. Oh. Oops, I cut off. Wasn't supposed to do that. (laughs) There is a sudden scream. One of the villagers stumbles upon something. 
Everyone gathers around the villager. A corpse lies before him. The body has a somewhat rubbery appearance, as if all of its bones had been broken. The man's pale, greenish face is frozen in a hideous grimace. Indiana and McGowan stare in shock. The villagers whisper among themselves, Scotty Ferguson. He is the eighth! Just like the others, all his bones busted, crushed. Whatever's killing people around here ain't human. It's there! Again! Pointing off screen. The woman shoots forward. The police and the townspeople are right behind her. A curious Indiana follows. Can I say, you know what this feels like? Not an Indiana Jones movie. Not so far. No. Literally the only thing Indiana Jones about this script so far is his name. Mm. Right, it's supposed to start action set piece, then set up the main MacGuffin. This is like not so much an action set piece as it seems like they're already also, setting there's up the MacGuffin. Also, police and a corpse. Like, this isn't how Indiana... Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> Please stop the voodoo, Mr. Jones. <laughs> Go get the geese. <laughs> <laughs> the geese. Oh, jeez, these oh, geese. Geez. Look at all these water chickens. <laughs> water chickens. <laughs> the woman stops in a clearing. She is pointing ahead. The villagers surround her. They stare ahead in the direction where the woman points. Nearly a mile in the distance, we see an ancient Scottish castle. An enormous 16th century stone structure. Tall, foreboding towers lined with menacing gargoyles pierce the night sky. The castle appears deserted. Its interior is completely dark, save for a small, flickering candlelight. It burns from the castle's upstairs window. Indiana gives a questioning look to McGowan. The inspector points to a castle's upstairs window. That light only burns after a murder's been committed. Let's go. The villagers step back, eyes wide with fear. Indiana Jones is a ghostbuster now. <laughs> Murmurs of, ain't going in there. No way. Got me a wife and kids, are heard from the terrified villagers. Indiana turns to McGowan. Even the usually sturdy inspector is trembling. But McGowan turns to his men, forcing himself to be strong. Well, um... <clears throat> That's why we're here, eh, men? Uh, Hennessy, Galbraith, Bottomley, you're coming with us. As each man is called, the color leaves his face. The chosen policemen reluctantly join the inspector in Indiana as they begin walking toward the castle. The remaining villagers and policemen stay behind, waiting. Just really not good. No. Oh, calling the geeses. The water chickens. There was some ghost hunting music. <laughs> yeah, you know what? You're right. Maybe we just need some ambient suspense. I'm, I'm, I'm got, I've got a theory about why this is starting this way. I think by this time, they were already like including Harrison in some of the writing. And so like he was like having some more input in it. So he's like, all right, bring bring the action to me. I'm going to be fishing. <laughs> I'm be laying there. I'm going to sleep. And they're just like, they're coming to me. <laughs> Can we have that big boulder just come at me? Yeah, it's coming at me. On the lake. And then it dodges me. <laughs> <laughs> Not now, I'm eating. I'm eating <laughs> fish. And- <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> the remaining villagers and policemen stay behind, waiting. The elderly woman kisses the crucifix that hangs from her neck. She stares at the departing men. May God help them. Cut to the castle doors. Two enormous wooden doors, covered with intricate carvings of demons, serpents, and gargoyles, adorn the castle entrance. Indiana and the police stand before the doors. Indy glances to the upstairs window. The candle still flickers. A long wooden bar, carved into the shape of a serpent, is fastened through the metal door latches. Oh, this is the entrance to the Chamber of Secrets! <gasps> There's your Harry Potter That's reference. my Harry Potter Horcrux yeah. tie-in. Yeah. 
It blocks the castle entrance. Indy and the policemen grab hold of the bar. It is extremely heavy. Using all of their strength, they manage to slide the bar out of the door latches. It hits the ground with a thud, rolling down the castle stairs. Indiana clutches the rusty metal door handle. He pulls. Hard. The doors creak, groan, and slowly open. A thick cloud of dust explodes from inside of the castle. It blows out all of the torches. Behind the open doors, there is only total darkness. Indiana enters, holding the flashlight before him. The policemen exchanged frightened glances. Inspector McGowan shoves them through the open doors. Interior, castle. Indy's flashlight beam gazes over the castle's interior. It is a stone palace, filled with elaborate antique furnishings, macabre sculptures and oil paintings. The place is bathed in dust. Thick cobwebs fill each corner. It is extremely cold. The men's breaths are visible. Hennessy rubs his folded arms. It's deathly cold in here. How could a human being survive? Hearing this, the other policemen exchange terrified glances. Indiana shines his flashlight to a twisting stone staircase. The staircase spirals upward along a far wall, leading to the second floor. A faint glimmer... Uh, where'd I go? A faint glimmer of light emanates from the top of the stairs. Indiana moves forward. The policemen follow. Indiana ascends the stairs, slowly, silently, toward the light. McGowan and the others are directly behind Indy. As he makes his way to the top, Indiana examines the bizarre oil paintings that line the wall. There are various portraits and landscapes depicting everything from military battles to Sunday picnics. But the unsettling quality of the pictures is that they each feature the same white-haired elderly man. Indy comments to Mac. This guy's got one hell of an ego. Baron Seamus Seagrove the Third. Some say he walks the moors every midnight. Others claim he's been dead for years. Indy arrives at the top of the stairs. His hand rests on a sculpture that is part of the banister. The sculpture is a bust of Baron Seagrove. Indiana makes his way to the first doorway where the light emanates. The door is wide open. A thick cobweb covers the entrance. Indy wipes away the web and enters the room. The policemen draw their pistols. They follow. Interior. Room. A bedroom. Deserted except for a few pieces of elaborate ancient furniture and a large canopy bed. Everything in the room is caked with dust and cobwebs, save for the burning candle. It rests on the windowsill in a sparkling, sterling silver holder. It bathes the room in orange light. Indiana walks toward the candle. Arm outstretched, he prepares to lift it. The policemen watch, shivering, silent, tightly gripping their pistols. Indy's fingers are inches from the candlestick. Suddenly, there is a loud whoosh. The candle goes out. Oh, that guy's been unmurdered. Great. (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) Indiana drops his flashlight. There is total darkness. We hear the distant, maniacal laugh of a man... It echoes through the castle. Indy retrieves the flashlight, clicking it back on. The candle has disappeared. The laugh has (laughs) sob-sided. McGowan looks at his men. A troubled look (laughs) covers the inspector's face. (laughs) It's... Did his Yuki break on his typewriter? It's a Dr. Seuss version. Trouble. Why did it have to be Trouble? <laughs> it's soft. Big Trouble. Big Trouble. A troubled look covers the. Oh, maybe he's just getting into the Scottish. A troubled a look. A troubled look. <laughs> Big Trouble. Little Tuna Town. <laughs> covers the inspector's face. <laughs> McGowan's eyes dart about the room. Hennessy is gone. Hennessy? Hennessy! He was standing right here. Just a second ago, standing right beside me. The sound of a bell. Oh my god. Oh what? my god. The U, Again. Is, the U is broken. 
You oh. narrate in a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of a bell. The sound of a bell. A <laughs> thick, dull ringing. In the distance, it sends a chill through the men. Indiana darts out of the room, following the sound. The policeman, the, the policeman are right behind him. Oh, baby, 98 more pages. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> I cannot do that. Interior castle. Indy and the police hurry down the stairs. I gotta back up a minute because now I'm thinking like these police in Scotland in 1937 are like, ah, there has been a murder. What did we do? I know. Let's go down to the lake. There's a vacationing archaeologist down there. He'll help. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Andy, we have another temple of doom. What the fuck is happening right now? Why are these people like, oh, there's a fucking archaeology professor fishing. He'll help us with our murder, which we need help because what we're just police... What do we know about fucking murder? I mean, if you want me to fill you in with a backstory, I can just make one up real quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping that they tell us. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I mean, when did Indiana like become the detective? Like, I'm assuming he went to Scotland. He was like, hey, what's up with Spooky Castle? Like, it's, it's got a medallion or something in it. It's iffy enough with the police going to Sherlock Holmes for help. But to yeah. go to an archaeologist yeah. for help. We'll and pay he, you in cocaine. And then he's looking at these paintings, and all I'm thinking are, these aren't old enough. Yeah. He's an archaeologist. He looks for shit in the dirt. He's not looking at paintings yeah, he's, in a Scottish castle. None of this is Indiana Jones. There's not one word of this whole thing, other than Indiana, that has anything to do with Indiana Jones. Okay, so we'll replace the word Indiana with Scooby and see how it fits. <laughs> snakes. I hate snakes. Why not to be snakes? <laughs> <laughs> I ruined it. <laughs> He's mad now. Interior castle. <laughs> Indy and the police hurry down the stairs. The ringing bell continues. McGowan is calling for Hennessy. Indy dashes to a door along the far wall. He opens it. It leads into a dark basement. The sound of the ringing bell echoes from inside. Indiana enters, motioning for the others to follow. Interior, basement. A decrepit, narrow wooden stairway leads into the basement. Indy holds tightly to his flashlight. The policemen are clustered behind him, taking each step with extreme... This is... It's Scooby. It's Scooby Doo. <laughs> yeah. This is exactly every shot from Scooby Doo of them walking into Fred's in front with the flashlight. Yep. Everyone's crowded behind them, like dang, like dang, uh, dang. Abbott and Costello or some shit. Yeah. Now you're getting it, Chris Columbus. What are you doing to this? We're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> we are. We're in. We're in deep trouble with this one. <laughs> Clustered behind him, taking each step with extreme caution. The boards creak and groan with their every move. Oh man, I really hope someone would have gotten away with this too if it wasn't for that pesky interfering archaeologist. Fishing archaeologist and the American fishing archaeologist in Scotland. McGowan leans to his side, calling for Hennessy. McGowan's weight causes the rotted banister to snap in two. He loses his footing, falling off the side of the stairs. Indiana's arm shoots out, grabbing hold of McGowan's collar. Indy pulls McGowan back to safety. McGowan catches his breath, shaking. Thanks for catching me. I'd rather be catching trout. (laughs) (laughs) This is so bad. Thank you nonetheless. (laughs) I, I'm so distracted by how much this is not Indiana Jones that I can't even judge it on its merits as a script on its own. <laughs> it's a cartoon right now. You're right. Oh, I can't wait for you to say this next word here. They continue down the stairs, arriving at the bottom. Oh, arrive. It is a large, musty stone basement. Oh, <laughs> arrive. That's right. A, a arrive a thing. I was waiting a for you fig. to hit that one, a and r- you skipped over. <laughs> Welcome I, to Lothlorien. 
Here, try the a river fig. This is a river fig. <laughs> My brother be catching a river fig. A river fig. This this is this is some confetti shit. <laughs> Just don't tweet it. You'll be okay. <laughs> it is a large, musty stone basement. The slimy walls are covered with a green moss. There are several doors along the basement wall. The sound of the ringing bell is much louder down here. Indiana moves to the first door. He reaches for the handle. The policemen draw their pistols. Indy opens the door. A large object shoots out from inside, rolling toward the men. Is it a boulder? It better not be a boulder. Please be a boulder. The policemen fire their guns. At the boulder. Several shots ring out. The object comes to a stop. A deep red liquid pours out into the floor. Onto the floor, excuse me. Indy dips his finger into the liquid. He tastes. Interesting blood type. The policemen stare, wide-eyed. Indy smiles. Cabernet Sauvignon, 1897. Fuck you. Fuck you. A little more gruff. Cabernet Sauvignon. (sighs) Nobody can recognize the year of a wine by tasting it. No one on earth. That's stupid. He's tasting it like blood. He's like blood. Like, but he's like cab. Vampire Indiana. He knew the exact year. That's what I'm saying. That's why I said fuck you. Because it's old, Sean. He's just guessing. They're not going to Google it. He's an archaeological <laughs> sommelier. It, it's written on the barrel. He's just <laughs> fucking with them. It's like 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 Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> like, hey, what oh, yeah. time is it? Oh, <laughs> it's like three o'clock. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Indy's flashlight beam shines ahead, illuminating the mysterious object, a wine barrel. And inside the room is a deserted wine cellar. So, Donkey Kong's throwing barrels at him. Or someone's like, all right, so we got this wine cellar, right? But we're going to set up a ramp and we got to like hold this barrel up at the top of the ramp and close the door real quick. So then when someone opens the door, <laughs> oh, this is going to be hilarious, brah. Wait, also like the, the order of these things is really funny because he's like opening the door and then they just hear a noise. So they just start firing. And he still yeah. doesn't know what this is. Because but they're trespassing on someone's land, so of course... the shoot it. Yeah, but, you just but, open a door and, oh, this guy's in his house, shoot him. That's, but, but before he shines the flashlight... Not American? It could have been the guy who disappeared, too. Like <laughs> Before he shines the flashlight, though, he kneels down and starts licking shit. Like, and he's like, oh, that's wine, thank God. Like, <laughs> and then he puts his flashlight... <laughs> He's like, that's just his thing. He's like, move out of the way. I got to taste this. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I got to taste whatever you guys, whatever shoot. you shot. It's fresh. <laughs> the kill is shoot, fresh. got to taste it. <laughs> I'm an archaeologist. God damn it. How do you think this shit works? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Do to do. Suddenly, a loud creak echoes through the basement. Galbraith cries out. <laughs> Ow, it's just Am I Galbraith? Am I Galbraith? Anybody can. Look! I feel like Tim from fucking Monty Python. <laughs> Look! <laughs> Everyone turns. A large stone door built into the wall slowly opens. I hope everybody shoots it immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Let me lick it! <laughs> oh, it's big trouble. Nobody touch anything until I'm done taste testing the crowd scene. <laughs> Andy up. and the police stare in amazement. The door op- stops, wide open. A flickering light glimmers from inside. Indiana walks to the opening. He peers into the opening. The police stay a few steps behind the archaeologist. Oh, it's not where the you want to be. The police with their guns stay behind the archaeologist because he's a superhero, I guess. I don't get this and I don't like it and I don't want to do it anymore. (laughs) You get the taste buds of a super cop. Behind the door, a family crypt. Stone coffins with glass covered tops line the crypt walls. Macabre, ghastly religious statues decorate the room. Countless death masks cover the ceiling, all carved with that same frighteningly familiar face. Baron (gasps) Seagrove! (laughs) Camera dollies to the far corner of the crypt. It stops on a close-up of the candlestick. The exact candle from upstairs. How the fuck do you know? 
Does this does it have candle one B carved into yeah. it? It says upper hallway on it. Who the fucking <laughs> picks the it up exact and it's like, candle? It's got it's got the number on it. He from tasted like, it before he came downstairs. <laughs> That's like, the same. This is the same one. <laughs> I could smell it. <laughs> Still burning, it rests on one of the coffin's glass tops. A trembling McGowan steps back away from the crypt. B blurts an order to his men. <clears throat> Galbraith, you come with me. We'll search for Hennessy. Out here, bottomly, you go with Dr. Jones. In there. <laughs> McGowan and Galbraith nearly fall over each other as they scramble away from the crypt. The two dash off into another section of the basement. Indy shakes his head. He enters the crypt. A reluctant and very frightened bottomly follows. Interior, crypt. Indy's flashlight beams, <laughs> beam dances across the glass coffin tops. Decayed corpses smile from inside, their hands tightly clutching crucifixes. Bottomley is horrified by the sights. Indiana continues ahead. He passes the burning candle, moving further into the darkness of the crypt. The shivering... Le- the shivering... Bottomley stays directly behind Indy. With their every step, the bell's ringing go- grows louder, louder. Indiana and Bottomley arrive in a circular chamber located at the far end of the crypt. Here, the ringing bell is nearly deafening. The sound echoes from above. We are on the floor of the bell tower. Indiana, they went to the basement. How are they now in the bell tower without climbing any steps? Well, maybe they're at the base of it, so maybe it just, like, goes all the way up the side of the castle. I don't know. <laughs> ruh <Ruh-roh. laughs> We found a bell tower. We found a bell tower. We found a bell tower. We found a catching trout. <laughs> Indiana shines his flashlight upward. The beam stops on a ringing bell that hangs several feet in the air. Not several hundred feet. Several feet. It is right over them. Seven feet. <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't Gladiator. Seven whole feet. Seven point three nine. <laughs> Inside of the bell, dangling by his feet, is the dead body of Hennessy. He has replaced the bell clapper. His body swings back and forth. It slams into the sides of the bell, causing the dull ringing. Bottomley screams. Ah! Indiana grabs Bottomley's arm. Let's get out of here. Indian Bottomley turns to the crypt door. It begins to close. The two men dash forward. The door continues to close. Indian Bottomley are only inches away. When the door slams shut, they push and kick at the door. No good. It won't budge. A panicked Bottomley calls for help. Inspector McGowan! Galbraith! Open the door! Using his flashlight, Indy scans the door, looking for a crack, another way out. Indy nudges Bottomley. I need more light. Bottomley hurries to the candle. He reaches out. There is a loud whoosh! The candle flame goes out, followed by total darkness. Indy turns from the door. Bottomley? No answer. Indy shines his flashlight toward the area. The candle is gone. There is no sign of Bottomley. Indiana takes a step forward. I hope they're both now up in the back. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those like one of those things that sits on your desk and goes clack. Yeah, clack. Yeah. clack. Like, that is clack. called a Newton's cradle. A Newton's cradle, but in the bell. Bottomley. <laughs> Again, no answer. Indy sweeps the flashlight beam across the room. It passes one of the coffins, then shoots back. Indy is met with a shocking sight. Bottomley lies inside the coffin, dead. His face twisted in a ghoulish smile. All of his bones broken. His hands are wrapped around a crucifix. Indy stares in horror. There is a sound. Footsteps. There is someone else in here. Indy's flashlight beam darts around the crypt. There is no sign of anyone. Who is it? Who's there? The same crazed laugh of a man echoes through the crypt. A chilled Indy turns back toward the door. 
He is startled to find... Uh, hold on. He is startled to find the crypt door covered with a thick sheet of ice. Indy reaches out. He touches the sparkling green ice. He snaps back his hand. His fingers are burnt. Table Reads will return after this brief word from our sponsors. What's up, docs and docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and if you like old cartoons and watching online reviewers dissect them, then you probably said the same thing I did about two years ago. Hey, what the fuck? Here, watch your language, you bud. Every Saturday morning, I do a brand new commentary of a Warner Brothers short. All throughout the month, I do video essays examining the history of these cartoons. Catch my videos on youtube.com slash ferriswheelhouse2, or just use the hashtag Looney Tunes Critic. And now, here's Eric Bauza, the new voice of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> You've been listening to the Looney Tunes critic. Ain't he a stinker? Lights, camera, action. So the movie's kaput, which means your script ain't worth the buffalo shit on a nickel. Now, back to Table Reads. So I, I have not been shy about my feelings so far <laughs> no anyone really? else i've not been picking it up at all i've never been a scooby fan unbiased honestly. narrator scooby-doo is one of my least favorite cartoons of all time yeah i really never liked it i'm relating i don't really judge anything before i taste it so like I, I, i'm kind of I'm <laughs> 1847 you seem like a bitch <laughs> Here's, here's you the thing. are a bitch. <laughs> you eat ass. <laughs> Indiana opens a door, and there's movement, and they just start fucking firing while they're looking for a missing one of their own. Meanwhile, a door opening itself, they're like, you know what? Let's just hide behind this archaeologist. They also drew their guns when they came into the castle, and then between coming down, they holstered them again, <laughs> and then he's like about to open his door, and they're like drawing them. <laughs> That's what they do in the eighties, though. Remember, this was written in the eighties, so like, there's a lot, a lot of, of dumb well, gun drawing. He doesn't like, really like do action movies, but if he did, they'd probably have someone like cocking their gun to be intimidating, and then cocking it again a minute later, <laughs> <laughs> uncocking it, even though it's an automatic weapon. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's just shooting shells out the side. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, just ejecting them as they're cocking. Like, oh, he has to keep looking badass. I'm out of bullets. I haven't even fired it. <laughs> I Piss off, ghost. Also, ghosts. Ghost. This is I, a big one. So if I'm if I'm mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, the the last crusade, I think, was supposed to be a spooky movie. Like they were supposed to be set in a ghost castle, but Steven Spielberg had just come off of poltergeist and was like, ah, I want to do something different. So we got well, the last crusade. Well, this this is what Eventually, they pivoted and made Last Crusade instead of this. I this really might be one, one that didn't get made. Holy shit! I, lo- I love Last Crusade. Yeah, like th- that was, was perfect. That was the one that I was like super into as a kid. Mm-hmm. I like Temple of Doom, but I was stupid. I like Temple of Doom. We were I mean, stupid. Spielberg <laughs> made uh, uh, Last Crusade to apologize for Temple of Doom. But fuck you, man. Temple of Doom was great. I dug it. I dug the shit out of it. I didn't watch it as much. No time for love, Dr. Jones. (laughs) It's Dr. Jones. No time for love. No time for love. (laughs) Short (laughs) round. That was Jeff's job. (laughs) Put your hand in the hole. (laughs) Fade in. We are going to die. (laughs) Interior basement. McGowan and Galbraith are outside of the crypt door. They pull at the door's metal handles, trying to open it, but the door won't move. McGowan calls to the door. Dr. Jones, try to push! Interior crypt. Indy answers, taking a step back. Can't! There's some kind of hot ice covering it. Covering the... Indiana suddenly falls. The door has disappeared. The floor has disappeared from beneath him. Indy manages to grab hold of a stone coffin. His fingers tightly grip the coffin's edge. Indiana looks down. Beneath him is a several hundred foot drop into total darkness. Indy tries to pull himself up. The coffin's ancient stone begins to crumble. Large chunks and pieces fall from Indy's grasp. He is losing his grip. 
seconds before he plummets into the abyss. Indiana reaches inside of the coffin. He clutches onto a corpse's arm. Using the arm, Indy swings downward. Interior, abyss. At the, at the precise moment, Indiana releases the dead arm. He lands on a rocky ledge, located only a few feet below the open crypt floor. Indy stands on the ledge, safe. He smiles, relieved. Suddenly, the ledge snaps. Indiana falls! His body drops hundreds of feet into the blackness. A moment passes, then we hear a splash. Bottom of the hole! A pool of water! (laughs) So many exclamation points. Surrounded by rocky, cavernous walls. Indiana's hat floats on the water's surface. Now, lest you think this is Indiana's normal hat, remember, this is a fishing hat. He looks like his dad. Oh, yeah. He looks like his dad, yeah. Yeah. That's better than the example I was going to use, which is the guy from MASH. (laughs) It's a bucket. Uh, What was his name? Not Colonel Potter, the other one. The Lieutenant Colonel guy in charge of the MASH unit. I watched the intro to mash and then i quickly changed the channel because i was (laughs) it's not my deal that's really a great show i i not as good as the movie well i heard it was good but i was too busy watching cartoons fair (laughs) (laughs) um oh yeah his hat <laughs> God, John, it's like keep it up, John. Here we go, baby. This shit, it's the tackle hat. Here we go. He's like, fuck Chris Columbus, fuck this shit. I just fuck have to pretend it's hats. not Indiana Jones. <laughs> oh, it's a soft spot for him. <gasps> this is like Scooby Doo after like Sean Connery's like, we named the dog Indiana. <laughs> 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 it's not. It's not that I have like some big soft spot for Indiana Jones. Yeah. It's just that this is so obviously not that. Yeah. It'd be like a Harry Potter movie with fucking laser guns. Then it'd be Ender's Game. This is Indiana Bones. <laughs> Indiana Bones. <laughs> That's a porno. Shit. <laughs> oh, that absolutely is. The huge, sure. huge balls roll down. The- yeah, but they're boobs. Yeah, they would be boobs. Yeah, you're chased by boobs. Oh, or, t- or is this a gay version? <laughs> why would Indiana Bones be... He's running away. Yeah, it's a gamer. Away he's running balls. away from boobs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, no, can't catch me. <laughs> His our, hat. Our movie's better. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, a fish flaps out of the water. The fish gobbles up one of the hat's live baits. There was live bait on his fucking hat the oh, whole time? Oh, shit, live like, bait? I thought it was like flies. He yeah. was like fly fishing. That's what I thought, No, too. he was laying down. He could have been fly fishing. He was, uh, he so casted. he had just worms and shit tucked into the band of his <laughs> well, hat? Well, it's typically not live. Like, it's uh, lures and shit, jigs. Yeah, but this says live. This yeah, says so there's live like bait. fucking like minnows and shit. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> he's just got a little sack of chum on the side. <laughs> I love that he's just moving to the castle and his hat is just moving. <laughs> the police came and got this guy and they're like, you lead us. Lead us into the castle. This the stupid hat. <laughs> Good God, what's on your hat? Ghost head fish. <laughs> <laughs> would he would he reach under a door for this hat? <laughs> he couldn't. The fish are like squirming it away. Like, and this one, the hat runs away. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh my! God. I know how the hat feels. <laughs> oh no! Squirming. A fish flaps out of the water. The fish gobbles up one of the hat's live baits and disappears back underwater. Indy smirks. Now they bite. Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Clever girl. That's my favorite. <laughs> wow, Chris Columbus got paid to write this. He's getting fucked up by a ghost and he's still like... <laughs> like he just saw two men hanging from a bell and he's like... <laughs> and now they bite. Fish jokes. Okay, okay, I have a prediction. I think... <laughs> I think Steven Spielberg got to this point of the script he got up to now they bite he's like Chris yeah read the script Uh uh-huh 
Can you do a second draft for me? Yeah, just just make it different. I don't I don't care. Just just make it different. Oh yeah, I read the whole thing. It's good. It's it's got some some pro. I got to page ten. Write a second fucking draft, or you're fired forever. That's, a, that's why he was like trying to smooth it over. <laughs> or there'll though. be a third guy hanging in the fucking bell tower. <laughs> yeah, no, I read the whole thing front to back, one through ten. Uh, we gotta <laughs> we gotta change some stuff. <laughs> Oh, there was more? Oh, no, no, no. It's great. I don't need to see more. Let's just try again. <laughs> yeah, just uh, throw it away. Start again. Indy attempts to pull himself out of the water. There is a loud sound. Grinding metal. Rattling chains. I give up. Ooh. Indy's eyes dart to his side. Two horizontal metal gates eject from the cavern walls. They shoot across the water. Like lightning, they're headed toward each other, and Indy's head. Ooh. Indy dives underwater. The gates snap shut, less than an inch above the water's surface. Indy attempts to resurface. The closed gate stops him. He clutches the grating, trying to move the gate. It's too strong. Indy struggles for air. No good. There isn't enough space. He's going to drown. Underwater. In desperation, Indy swims downward, looking for an alternate escape, but there is no bottom in sight. Indy's eyes bulge. His face loses color. Only a few precious seconds of life remain, when suddenly he spots something. Is it the candle? Please be the candle. Underwater. Burning. Please be the fish that ate the minnow. (laughs) Carrying the candle. And is returning the favor. Ah, the water chickens. <laughs> it's the geese. <laughs> when suddenly he spots something. A small tunnel built into the cavern wall. Indiana hurriedly swims to the tunnel. He bolts inside. A water fountain. A large three-tiered stone structure. Instead of the familiar carvings of angels and beautiful maidens, the fa- the fountain is surrounded with water spewing demons, gargoyles, and hellish beasts. Camera dollies to a large metal drain located inside of the fountain's base. The drain cover begins to turn, suddenly flipping open. Indiana crawls out of the opening. He gulps at the air. Color returns to his face. Life returns to his body. Indy rises to his feet. He finds himself standing in the fountain. Indy's POV. He is inside of a banquet room. The sprawling room is beautifully decorated in Victorian dignity. The room is immaculate, not one speck of dust. Two medieval suits of armor adorn one wall. A gargantuan crystal chandelier hangs above a long mahogany banquet table. At the far end of the table sits a shriveled, white-haired elderly man. It is Baron Seamus Seagrove III, the fellow whose likeness appeared in every piece of artwork. Baron Seagrove is calmly eating his dinner. A bloated roasted pig rests on a silver platter before him. The same candle we saw burning in the upstairs room in the family crypt now rests on the table, (laughs) directly beside the Baron. It's like a bad game of Clue. How do we know? I don't know. I've never had such an eye for candles. (laughs) I recognize that candle. Maybe it's just the particular candlestick. That's true. Like it's probably it's probably got some like shit on it. Like we're not, not literal. Maybe literal shit. Maybe it's a Yankee candle. That's what it is. It says Baron Seamus the Third on the side of it. <laughs> it smells like cobwebs and dust. <laughs> Two powerful muscular mastiffs are tied to Baron Seagrove's chair. Teeth bared. Eyes ALAs. <laughs> <laughs> it should say ablaze. The hounds fight for a scrap of meat. Indiana stares in bewilderment. One of those dogs' names is, names is Indiana. No, it's not. It better be. That would Quit be lying to me, that, Sean. That I look away better. from my phone for one second. <laughs> Indiana stares in bewilderment at the new surroundings. He steps out of the fountain. Baron Seagrove seems unaware of Indy's presence. Indiana walks toward the Baron. Excuse me, sir. Hello? 
Baron Seagrove does not look up from his plate. Indy moves closer. He speaks louder. Can you hear me? Close up. Beneath the table. Baron Seagrove is just jerking it. <laughs> you see my candle? Baron Seagrove's hand nonchalantly unties the Mastiff's bindings. Indiana still walks toward the table. The Baron continues to ignore him. Indy is annoyed. Listen, pal, there are two dead policemen upstairs and... The Mastiffs leap forward, coming at Indiana. He tries to get away. Too slow. The hounds are upon him, tearing, clawing, biting. They drag Indy to the floor. Baron Seagrove continues to enjoy his dinner, seemingly oblivious to the scene before him. Indiana fights for his life. The vicious dogs tear at his clothing and skin. Indy spots something on the wall above. Hanging amidst the display of stuffed animal heads is a hunter's trumpet. Indy struggles to his knees, trying to reach for the horn. But the dogs are still biting, clawing, weakening Indiana. Indy's fingers are inches from the horn. The mastiff's sharp claws rip at his arm, but Indy manages to snatch the trumpet. He quickly moves the horn to his lips. He blows, hard, much like the script. (laughs) A high, piercing note fills the air. The dogs respond to the sound. They halt, stopping their attack. (laughs) For a moment. (laughs) Tattered and bruised, Indiana leaps to his feet. He drops the horn. He runs. Yeah, drop the horn that stops the dogs from attacking you. The Mastiffs come to their senses. They dart after Indy, mouths foaming. Baron Seagrove continues to dine, still ignoring the action. Indy runs to a velvet curtain. He grabs hold of a long, thick rope that is attached to the curtain. Indiana tears the curtain from the wall. A large stained glass window is behind the curtain. The first Mastiff leaps at Indy. Indiana quickly drapes the curtain over the hound. Indy ties a large knot in the open curtain end. The dog is trapped. Get it? Because this is a castle, and they have many tapestries. Indy turns. Aww. The second mastiff is only a few feet away, <laughs> barreling toward Indy. Indiana hops to the window ledge. He opens the window. The mastiff leaps upward. Indiana jumps out of the window. The dog follows Indy, also jumping out of the window. <laughs> Exterior Caps, caps, caps Exterior window The Mastiff falls Flying hundreds of feet into the rocky waters below Splash The hound's vicious howl fades Camera pans from the water and stops on Indiana Jones Indy has outsmarted the Mastiff Yet that's what to, to aim for Our hero has outsmarted a dog, everybody. Isn't he the greatest? By running away. He hangs onto the swinging window frame. Safe. He leaps back inside the room. Interior. Banquet room. Baron Seagrove pours himself a glass of wine. A very angry Indiana walks toward the Baron. Chow's time's over, mister. You better start talking. The Baron still ignores Indiana. There's a lot of strange things happening around here. (laughs) (sighs) A suit of armor, located a few feet behind Indy, suddenly twitches. Its arm lowers. Its head slowly turns. Like an episode of Scooby fucking do. (laughs) And it's still happening. (laughs) There's going to be a portrait where its eyes start to follow. I want some answers, mister. <laughs> Mr. Ghost? <laughs> no, everything is fine here. Fine. Uh, we're doing... How are you? Oh, no. I will not laugh at yours. If no one laughed at my <laughs> tapestry joke. <laughs> I'm trying to recall good Indiana Jones movies. <laughs> Y'all are going to let me drown. <laughs> Indiana still walks... Hey. Indiana still walks toward the Baron, who is only concerned with spreading butter on his bread. Indy shouts. And I want some answers. Do you hear me? I want some answers now. Yeah, finger point. (laughs) There is a loud creak of metal. A huge, sharp battle axe shoots into frame. Why didn't he reach for that when he was defending himself from the dogs? Oh, oh, a battle axe. uh, Ooh, horn. 
Oh, Jesus. Strange things are happening. A huge, sharp battle axe shoots into frame, swinging towards Indy's head. Indiana spins. The axe is only inches from his face. Indy leaps back. Whoosh! The axe slices through the air, just missing Indy. The shaken Indiana is shocked to see a glistening black suit of armor. The Black Knight is nearly seven feet tall. It has come to life and is walking toward Indy. The Black Knight is wildly swinging the battle axe. Indiana continues to step back, back, unbeknownst to Indy. His steps are leaning him toward another suit of armor. Ah, two. Also over seven feet tall, this armor is made of a silvery white metal. As Indy moves closer, the White Knight opens its arms. When Indy is within reach, the White Knight locks its powerful arms around Indy's chest. Indiana tries to break free. No good. The White Knight's grip is too tight. Indy is trapped. The Black Knight still comes toward Indiana. Its frenzied axe swings back and forth. Indy still struggles with the White Knight's bone-crunching grip. The Black Knight is only a few feet from Indy. Its deadly axe blade inches from Indy's face. Indiana moves fast. He jerks his body forward. This flips the White Knight off its feet. Over Indy's head, the White Knight flies into the Black Knight. Crash! This sends both knights falling to the floor. There is no dialogue on this whole page. This whole page is just me reading absolute garbage. (laughs) Top to bottom, that's my whole night now. That's what I'm trying to interject just to give you a break. (laughs) I'm so upset. I, I don't think I've seen Sean this pissed off. Like, I've, I've sat down. I'm listening. This is story time with Sean. Yeah. This yeah. is worse than Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. I said it. No. No. <laughs> no. You take that back. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a page. Give it a page. <laughs> Let's see what they do with their fridges in this one, and then we'll talk. <laughs> but it's, it's perfectly reasonable Nuke the fridge. Nuking the fridge is the new jumping the shark. Oh, no, you're never going to make fetch happen. Stop. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Just pick a spot, man. Nobody's paying attention. (laughs) Indiana shoots to his feet. The two knights leap to their feet. They chase Indy. The black... (laughs) Indy jumps through the window, hanging onto the thing. (laughs) <laughs> what if he does? He just doesn't even <laughs> outsmarted the black knight. How many more windows I got? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could say that, and the audience would blow. Oh, the, the, yeah, the <laughs> listeners like, well, written, shit. Well, they could have written that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris Columbus is actually listening to this. He's like, shit. <laughs> White out. White out. <laughs> 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 He's going back to his old scripture. Yeah, he's trying to fix it. Like, it's fucking guys. <laughs> he just resends it to Spielberg. <laughs> I made those edits. <laughs> you got a fifth one coming out, right? <laughs> and he's fighting aliens and Russians, right? Yeah, at the same time. Oh, fuck me. Mm. Uh <laughs> the two knights leap. They chase Indy, the black knight armed with his axe, the white knight armed with a long, sharp sword that he completely neglected to use before. I'll just bear hug him. I don't need my sword. I'll just bear hug him. Right out the window. <laughs> Baron Seagrove spoons another helping of boiled potatoes into his plate. <laughs> Indy snatches a, a shield and sword from a nearby wall display. Again... If there's all these weapons around the room, why was this motherfucker grabbing a horn? Throw the potatoes at him. That was a that was a hell of a throw, gamble. Throw a potato at him. I bet, that, I bet that's a dog horn. Yeah, that dog horn will help me, because dog horns are a thing people have heard of, right? Dog horns? Get fucked, Walter Frey. <laughs> <laughs> Ready to fight. The knights are upon him. Indiana battles both knights. He defends the bludgeoning battle axe with his shield and sword fights the other knight, like he learned in archaeology school. Technically, the battle axe is a slashing weapon, not a bludgeoning weapon. Thrash! Clang! (laughs) The sound of heavy metal fills the room. 
Oh, I deleted the. Oh, the the no, truck. the sound of heavy metal. <laughs> read song, read, right? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> I, I just deleted that tonight. Oh, I was like, there's no oh. way I'm going to need that on Indiana Jones. <laughs> we'll clip what we just did and <laughs> songify that shit. <laughs> uh, where were we? Heavy metal somewhere? Mm-hmm. India, India's sword strikes. Okay, man. Indy's sword strikes the white knight's thick chest. He's thick. The sword thick. snaps in two. He's a thick boy. In the confusion, Indy's shield is knocked from his hand by the powerful battle axe. Indy is defenseless. The two metal giants raise their weapons high, aiming for Indy's head. The two knights swing. Indy dives to the floor. The knights can't stop their weapons in time. Crunch. They deliver a hard blow to each other. Oopsie. The woozy knights wobble and spin. In a momentary daze, Indiana jumps to his feet. The black knight hisses, furious. He dashes after Indiana. The white knight is still reeling from the blow. He's a walker. Why do they have Uh, emotions? The knight walk like... They're just empty suits of armor, like, ah, and the other one's like, oh, still woozy. Are they empty, or are they both Peter Mayhew? (gasps) That's my friend Chewie. I hope they're filled with more mastiffs. <laughs> <laughs> Just mastiffs you killed my on brother. each other's shoulders. <laughs> you killed regular dog and armored dog. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't kill him. He jumped out the window. He killed himself. He sicked them on the and townspeople he- now. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, I'm free. <laughs> Choose the form. This Empty. also seems like a like an 80s video game. Like you, like sort of like with a a Zelda layout, yeah. you know that kind of thing where you shit coming out of the walls, and, and you're just going over to the eating dude. He's over there eating like bloop bloop bloop, <laughs> and then like dogs come out going burp, 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 burp. like shit sticking out of the wall. The, like. the DNA of 1930s like radio serials has ever been this intense in the Indiana Jones. I know that's what they were based off of Steven Spielberg's childhood, like the, the serials and shit. Well, like the yeah, the radio stuff, like when they would the kids would gather around and listen yeah. to the new adventures or Indiana nah, Jones. Nah, 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 this is that, yeah. but just as shitty as those were. <laughs> like Chris Columbus learned nothing, and it's just like this is Indiana Jones versus the spooky ghostman. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. The Black Knight hisses furious. furious. He dashes after Indiana, still reeling. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's get back to spooky ghostman. Spooky ghostman. <laughs> My friends call me Spooky Ghostman. <laughs> My real name is Spencer Ghostman. I, I don't know where the name came from. I'm setting a law now. If this Baron fucking talks, <laughs> it is you with that voice. Spooky Ghostman. <laughs> Baron Seamus Ghostman. Seamus the Ghostman. Dad. You can call me Spooky Ghostman. <laughs> and my my three... D- t- two dogs. <laughs> But really, he's he's a real estate developer, obviously, trying to scare people away from buying the property or something. <laughs> Alexa, light the cat downstairs candle. It, it, it'll hear you. Shit. I forgot to mute it. You ruined None. it. None. None of them. Cancel. Spooky Ghostman. Cancel. Alexa, shut up. No, None. <laughs> Damn it, Alexa. Jeff, stop activating my robots. Sorry. <laughs> Alexa, Which are probably the script. next... Robots are probably the next, you know, Indiana Jones staple that's going to turn up in the script. Are you telling me Spooky Ghostman's about to release some robots onto, <laughs> onto Indiana Jones it's himself? Ma- maybe McGowan and Galbraith are Spooky actually Spooky Ghostman is a robot. Sp- <laughs> release the robots. <laughs> Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> oh, man. This script sucks. <laughs> it really does. I didn't, Ours is better. I did not anticipate this was going to be this bad. We spent as much time fixing it as you, as you have reading it. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, yeah, you're fucked. Uh, uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, oh, reeling from the blow. You're at seeing the Black Knight in hot pursuit. Uh, Amy High dives to the floor. Indiana 
jumps to his feet. The Black Knight hisses furious. Yeah, oh yeah, reeling from the wall. Sealing the see, <laughs> seeing the Black Knight in hot pursuit, Indy searches for a weapon. He spots the curtain's long, thick rope lying on the floor. He already used that one. The Black Knight is nearly upon Indy. Axe raised. Indiana grabs the rope. He spins, facing the knight. Indy sna- snaps his wrist. A loud crack. The rope shoots forward, not unlike Indiana's familiar whip. Yay! That he na, left na, at home with his na, familiar na, hat. With his hat. <laughs> with less worms in it. I'm on vacation. <laughs> I'm on this vacation. whip also has worms on it. <laughs> <laughs> it is live bait. <laughs> the rope whips itself around the Black Knight's neck. Indy jerks the whip forward. Okay, even if this was human, that doesn't help. No. You can't strangle a suit of armor. We're about to see it's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> this sends the knight flying through the air. The knight cra- These are really light suits of armor also. The knight crashes into the stone fount- fountain. The fountain. <laughs> the stone the fountain. <laughs> Several of the fountain sculptures shatter into pieces. The dazed, dented Black Knight attempts to... What is this music? Tis okay. but a yeah, scratch. Some, oh, something's got to give. Either that armor was super light and the fountain was shittily made or the fountain was sturdy and Indy's just fucking jacked and able to sl- <laughs> yeah. sling heavy armor around the room. <laughs> well, you know, his whip does have superpowers. This is not his whip, though. Well, he imbues any ropey thing with This is spooky ghost rope. That's why the ladies like him so much. <laughs> ah. Last crusade for my dick. <laughs> <laughs> the dazed, dented Black Knight attempts to stand, but loses his footing. The knight falls backward into the fountain's wide drain opening. Its heavy armor causes the knight to sink, disappearing into the hole. Into the pool of water. We get it. <laughs> Indy catches his breath. The White Knight's sword swings into frame, slicing through Indiana's jacket. Indy jumps back. The vicious White Knight comes toward him. Indiana turns to run, finding himself at the banquet table, face to face with the roasted pig. <sighs> <laughs> A few feet away, Baron Seagrove continues to dine. The White Knight raises his sword above Indy. Whoosh! The sword begins to swing down. Indiana ducks and dodges the deadly blows. Instead of carving Indiana, the Knight's sword manages to slice perfect sections of the roasted pig. Slapstick now? The satisfied Baron helps himself to a freshly carved slice of pork. I I hate this more than anything. I, th- I think you're tired. You've been reading for about 45 minutes. Indiana leaps onto the tabletop, trying to escape the living suit of armor. But the white knight climbs up onto the table, following Indy. The sword-slashing knight pursues... I don't have the energy for that, I'm sorry. The sword-slashing knight pursues Indy along the tabletop. Indy glances upward to the heavy chandeliers. Indy smiles. A plan. He continues to step backward, leading the knight directly below the chandelier. At the precise moment, Indy picks up a sterling silver plate from the tabletop. Indy whisks the plate in the air, toward the rope that holds the chandelier. No. The spinning plate severs the rope. Because plates are so sharp. Oh, he's so strong. The chandelier flies downward. That's called falling. Crashing on top of the white knight. The knight lies beneath the chandelier, motionless. The sword drops from its lifeless hand onto the tabletop. (gasps) Indy takes the knight's sword, eyes on fire, sword outstretched. Indiana walks across the tabletop, headed for Baron Seagrove. The Baron prepares to take another bite of his food. I feel him. When I get hungry, you cannot distract me. The sword shoots into frame. The tip of the blade rests upon Baron Seagrove's rubbery throat. Indiana snarls. Haven't you had enough? (laughs) Yeah. Baron Seagrove finally looks at Indiana. The Baron lowers his fork. His face twists into an eerie grin. He begins laughing. It's the same maniacal laugh we heard earlier. (laughs) 
Indy responds by blowing out the flame of the mysterious candle. The room's door bursts open. Inspector McGowan and... It should be Inspectors McGowan and Galbraith dash inside. They hurry to Baron Seagrove. Their pistols aimed at him. Galbraith handcuffs the Baron. McGowan looks at the bruised, bloodied, and tattered Indiana Jones. Now you can get back to your fishing, Dr. Jones. No chance, Mac. My plane leaves in the morning. Vacation's over. Gotta get back to school. Tis a shame to go home empty-handed. Tell you what, my friend. I fancy myself quite the fisherman. Tomorrow I'll go out and catch a real beauty, eh? Right. Send it to me, airmail. Dr. Jones, a McGowan's word is truer than... Yeah, yeah, an angel's kiss, I know. They exit the room. Fade out. So, we got started late tonight, and I was going to see if we could get through an episode, and then if I could get you guys to stick around for a second one still, but there's not a fucking way in hell I can do another episode of this. This is pretty bad. You can... I will quit this podcast. (laughs) You can read to us on the way home. We'll just Skype this in. (laughs) Call it in. Like, we've only got about ten lines. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. But no. Ah. No. I will I will delete every fucking trace of this podcast on the internet before I will read any more of this script tonight. God damn. <laughs> it's like we're making up for lost time with Gladiator. Like there were no fight scenes and this one's all oh. action. <laughs> and it's dumb, dumb action. It's Abbott and Costello level action. Right. It's bad. Yuck, yuck, yuck. <laughs> Get him with your sword. <laughs> oh, he's ghostman. He's, he's so mad. I read forward a little bit. Look, look. <laughs> You're going to love it. <laughs> the, the idea that Steven Spielberg and George Lucas read this. And Chris Columbus was ever allowed to be involved with a movie ever again is astounding. I mean, have you seen the prequels? Like, <laughs> I'm gonna do some bad. research, but I'm pretty sure George liked it. <laughs> I did research, and George did not like. He it. did not like it. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. George was like, I don't know, it's, it's a little too far fetched with the the supernatural stuff, and that's coming from a guy that wrote a whole movie about the fucking Ark of the Covenant melting Nazis' faces off. Yeah. And the the still beating heart. Now, when I say he wrote it, I mean he came up with the idea. Because Lawrence Kasdan wrote uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah, this is before they were grandparents, which is kind of what hit everybody. Oh, God, we're doing that thing, guys. We're doing that thing where we start talking about any movie that's better than this one. And that could, that could be t- time consuming. You're right. Stay welcome, on target. Welcome to the new podcast where we talk about movies that don't suck. We're going to write <gasps> our own Indiana Jones movie. So, guys, take turns. What's uh, your favorite part of this? My favorite part of this? The um, script. Yeah. I love taste testing things before you can see it. <laughs> That's my ideal, like... He's like playing a game of like, ooh, I'll guess it. Wine. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what Jeff does. He broke the light in his fridge on purpose. And in the middle of the night, he just gets up, Sticks doesn't his turn finger the in it. I go downstairs, I start shooting, and then I play a nice little game of wine or body. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's my fiance. Body, body again. <laughs> Not again. We got to change neighborhoods. <laughs> again. You go, Josh. That was yours. I really like the. I really like the body in the bell. Hey, <laughs> I think that shit's fucking. It's it's kind of cool. But it, how the fuck did it get there? It makes like, the, it, well, also, it makes the ghost like boss, right? Because he's like hung a body. Oh, another fat fucker hung another body. Time to eat. <laughs> <laughs> like this ghost is busy. I like I like that. Yeah, and and a body doesn't make that noise. It has yeah, to the be, bell should be like. 
It'd just be, it'd just be like, <laughs> plop, 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 plop. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like, you know, I, I was imagining him having like a metal helmet, like a, like a, like a World War II helmet or World like War one of those one German helmet. ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. On so the like, dong, like, he's still holding his gun. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this. Sean, what's your favorite part about this? The screen? part where you get to stop reading. Oh, no, let him answer. What do you got? Fade out. Find some, no, no, find something good. Find something good. Give me give me one good thing. Here, yo, try hard. Oh, oh he's, no. Oh, he's, he's gonna, thinking. He's going to poop. There was, there was, that was a shit. Okay, my favorite part was getting to read a bunch of Scottish accent. Hey, oh, okay. Yeah. Badly. Yeah, 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 yeah well, no, I, I did the badly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to listen to some shit. I don't know. I'm watch the boys again. And then come to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, do it. The boys was good. Hell yeah, it was. I enjoyed the hell out of that. Welcome to Boys Cast. <laughs> the secret ending to the Table Reads podcast. <laughs> yes, you've reached the secret track at the end of the podcast. Buckle in, everybody. <laughs> you have to sit through an hour of terrible screenplays, and then you get our whole other show. Everybody's looking, wondering why they downloaded a two-hour podcast <laughs> that ends at an hour in. Fade out. Oh, Fade man. Okay. Back in. Josh, plug your stuff. JoshuaJBaker.com. I'm doing a lot of videography stuff lately. Uh, I still do voiceover, and yeah, you can reach out to me at uh, me, M-E, at JoshuaJBaker.com if you've got some commercial work that you'd like done. That's what I'm doing right now. Do you have anything over there, Jeff? Uh, just donate some shit to St. Jude's Hospital, whatever. Hey, that's a, that's a good I'm going to plug charities instead of my own shit because I that. have nothing. He's, so every episode, I'm going to th- come up with This something. dude's not even online. No, no, no. He's a ghost. I'm a ghost. I watch movies. He's got... <laughs> he, he doesn't just have dial-up. He has dial-up, and he uses one of those phones where you have to pull the, the handle off the side and just tap on the on the hang-up switch Hello? to get Hello? the operator. Hello? And he's like, operator, call me the internet! I watch the boys by going to the, the library and downloading <laughs> images and printing them out and taking them home. <laughs> I'm like, well, that was good! <laughs> That's like early... I'm watching the boys by... Logging into my Amazon account and reading the comic. <laughs> Just flipping through in front of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, guys, you can get table reads anywhere that you get your podcasts. You've pretty much figured it out, but if you manage to get it somewhere that isn't your favorite, go to the place that's your favorite. We're there too. If you want any more information, want to download the script and read it yourself for some fucking ungodly reason, go to tablereadspodcast.com. Um, you can catch us on Instagram and Twitter at the Table Reads, or on Facebook at facebook.com slash table reads. That's it. We'll see you next week for some more of this goddamn Indiana Jones bullshit. And way, way to keep them coming back. <laughs> yeah. Until then, we will miss you. This podcast was created by Sean McBee. For more, visit TableReadsPodcast.com. Cut to black. Black.